all the time. I encourage them about being a leader and not a follower. You know, we always say that to you. You know, said it always, yes. I can't be more proud of him. Everything that we have taught him, he's actually applying it in his adult life. You know, it feels good to come back home, fresh air. I can go out on the roads, drive, get somewhere in five minutes, just five miles away. Being in my old high school, you know, bringing back memories, walking these halls, um, playing in that gym. So it just feels great to be back. Oh, come on! Find, find a seat. You know we ain't gonna spend that much time with him, so we try to at least spend as much time we can with him, laugh and joke, be like we used to be as a young when he was a young kid. A lot of times we try to have conversations where we're not talking about basketball. Yeah, basketball, yeah, basketball. Yeah. And we just try to be normal for a second, and then we wind up talking about basketball, and what? that's why we end our night talking about basketball. Or he, or he, or he want his mom to cook something. Oh yeah, yeah. He's always been that type of person that people draw to him. Teachers, I don't care where he went, if we go to the school, they will say we wish we had a whole classroom of your Ron. kids or your or they yeah. run. He's willing to help others. You know, he's always been that kid that just, you know, if you need me, I'm right here. Daron is a much better person than he is a basketball player. He was a great human being. We never had to push him to practice. You know, he was never late. National Honor Society student, you know, would talk to anybody in, in the hallway, whether it's a custodian, it's a teacher or an administrator, you know, everybody loved him. He embodied everything you wanted in a student athlete. Well, I feel like I'm the type of person, he'd be two guys that don't even like each other, but they both come sit with me because they can tolerate being around each other if they with me type of thing. So I feel like I just, just how I am. I don't know. Out of all the kids that we have, Dayron already knew what he wanted. I can remember when he was five and six years old because he started playing sports so early. He went to church and said, hey, can you pray for me to be an NFL player? That's what he asked the pa pastor. So he didn't start playing basketball till he was eight. And he went back to the pastor and said, no, I want to go to the NBA. So he's he's always had that work at that at a young age. He probably was in the fourth, fifth grade, man. And he was a man child on the boards. He could rebound the basketball like no other kid that we ever seen. And then his speed as well. He had real good speed for his size. He was very raw, had really good feet and good hands, and had a very high basketball IQ for his age. And so, you know, with his work at the end, with him continuing to grow, you knew he had a shot to be, to be very special. I used to make him watch documentaries of other players coming up like that, came through the league, big men and stuff like that. Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, Amari. Dwight. Dwight Howard. See this guy playing here, playing this, playing that. He's like, Dad, I'm not him. I pull up clips of this dude playing like this. This guy playing, I say, he your height there, right? He your size. Look what he doing. He's like, Dad, that's not me. Dad, you can't compare me to everybody else. That's not me. So I stopped doing that. We just got in the gym and we just grind. I just wanted him to be the best player that Dayron could be. You know, not really try to emulate somebody else, you know, be your own man. I loved it when I played for Coach Cherry. You know, he ain't what is the type of guy like to hold you back from what, what things you can do. You know, if you show him you can do things, he gonna let you do it. So I like that about him too. We constantly tell him, you know, you get ahead and, and you put the work in in the offseason and, and in the preseason, we're gonna let you show and develop your skills throughout the course of the year. We just always, you know, had a little understanding. He could show his skills, play on the perimeter, shoot it a little bit. But we know when it came down to, I can go in the paint and dominate when I wanted to. And 
The dungeon, I would say, is for only people that got that dog in them. If you ain't trying to really work, don't come to the dungeon. Definitely during the summer. You ain't gonna last five minutes. Cause when you walk in there, it's probably already 110 degrees. And we went there to the dungeon, like, what in the world is this? Concrete floor, you know what I'm saying? Look rough. You know that you wanted something if you was able to play under the conditions that those athletes were playing under. A gym that can build character. Uh, it's not a pretty gym. It's a, a hard-nosed gym where you gotta grind. You gotta put in a lot of work. Here, we make our players uncomfortable. And Dyron Sharp was one of those players we made uncomfortable. Keep you to put it on them. Put it on them, man. Make them, man, bring them down. We in there, mid-summers, flipping tires. About to quit. I'm in there crying, telling my dad I want to play basketball no more. Sometimes he felt like, like, Damn, I don't want to go to practice. But like, nah, Darren, this is what you say you want to set your mind for. When you sit home, other guys are practicing. They're moving forward. You know, I mean, Keith talked to me, and I, I've been pushing ever since. I have all good things to say about the dungeon. I was very critical at first, I must say. <laughs> My son is not going there. His legs going to fall off. I don't know, I was saying some crazy stuff. But it's been some gems that come out of that gym. And my son was one of them. He's always been willing to work, man. That's that's just who he is, you know, and that's a tribute to his parents and his upbringing. Everybody knew, like, my parents didn't play. I ain't getting no trouble, because I, I know they're going to take basketball from me. I'm a gamer, too. They're taking that game, too, boy. First thing, I'm walking the house, they're taking that game. Nobody plays with fatigue. We took the way things that he loved. No game, no shoes, or no basketball practice. One time, I talked back to my mom, and I didn't get to play in the game. I had to go to the school and tell everybody I, I, I'm sick or grades or something. But my mom, it just got sick. I talked back to my mom type of thing. So, no, they were strict. We didn't play seeds in our house. It had to be an A and a high B. We started at an other age, elementary. With all our kids. All our kids. So. At the end of the day, he, he was a straight-A student. My mom and dad, they were always pushing me. So, like, they grew up with a rough life. You know, they got, they got a hard story to tell. Well, that's pretty much showed that, dang, my parents really bust their tail to get to where I'm at. They work every day, every day, every day, every day. Some people think this, this journey is easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not, it's a lot of sacrifices. I see why they push me so hard. So I, I love them for that. When he got older, he made his mind up where I'm going to the NBA. He didn't have time for nothing and nobody. All he did was go to the gym. He would get up like 4.30, 5 o'clock, go to the gym, work out, come back. Every day? Uh, and I get up and go to work for like, I hear my says, oh, he up. That's when I know for real that he was really serious. So. No, he's going to be the first one in the gym, the last one to leave, and tries to be first in every drill, tries to win every drill. And, you know, once you have that and you have a little bit of skill, you know, everything else kind of flows naturally. The best thing about it was he was so engaging with everybody. Man, he, he talked to everybody, so everybody loved him, you know. He looked at the student section and hyped them up and you know it, it was just it was an amazing time. He's so competitive, you know, he took losses personally and uh, just came back wanting to get better and better. You know, we lost in two regional finals and you know he was determined that he was gonna get better and lead us the next year, which he did. Uh, championship season, he was so dominant in the playoffs. He was the best player in the state at that time. I don't care what anybody said. It's always stood out in terms of his personality, his energy, his effort level, and then his skill set. Seeing him earlier on was really helpful. Um, so that way when our, our scouting group you know, were having discussions about him, we got a chance to kind of revisit some of those skills that he had beforehand, and then also what he did in Carolina, put it all together, and that's why we wanted to target him You know, when we were um, going for the draft. I will always just send him encouraging words, remind him of who he is and just play the game that you love and just let them know we're standing behind you 100 percent we're your biggest fans it doesn't matter what nobody else say 
If you don't bounce a ball tomorrow, I'm okay, cause you my son, I love you. So I got you 100%. You know, when the fans stop cheering, I'm here. Look See at that, that picture, picture right there? Draft night. Yeah, that's a moment that speaks for itself. He expresses himself all the time in so many ways, where, whether it's a conversation, whether it's financially, or just like this camp here that he did. Back when I was young, we had to like raise money, like cookies and stuff like that. I had like camps and stuff like that. Really wasn't like anybody like bring, come back, like throw camps for kids type of thing. So, you know, it just feel good to come back, give them some inspiration, see what they gotta do in life, to get reached their dreams and goals. Good catch! Good catch! It just made my heart sing today. And those kids were just so happy. He would be an example set for the, the next generation that's coming up that was there today to show them that anything is possible. Um, right here from Pitt County, one of our local kids made it and he was there to tell his story and he was there to encourage all the young ones coming up behind him. I can't do nothing. To see their faces light up and the smiles on their faces, Man, they was like, and they was tuned in too. Shoot, man, I know all y'all young. So, you know, like, even though when you're young, like, if you really want to be a great basketball player, bro, if you go ahead and put the work in now and start hard working now, like, you'll be ahead of everybody when you get older, bro. Like, because the older you get, like, the more physical the game's going to get, pushing and pulling and grabbing, that type of thing. You know, y'all 7 through 11, you 7 years old. If you're out here working out like you're a 12 year old, I mean, by the time you get 12, you be playing like you 16, 17. You know what I'm saying? So like you be ahead of the game before anybody else. As long as you in the gym. One, two, three. I hope that put a mark on their life that's like, dang, and if they can do it, we can do it. Mm -hmm. That's that's what it's all about. That's the fun part of my job. You get a chance to, to really see the full picture. For us to see kind of where he was, you know, both his growth from a body standpoint, then just seeing his confidence grow, you know, seeing his personality grow, as well as seeing his skills um, kind of develop on the court. So all those things are really important to kind of see where he came from, where he is currently, and put all that together to see where he possibly could be at the end of the day. It's noticeable, you know, there's the changes in his body. Not only obviously he's maturing and so forth, he's still young, but the work that he's put in and maybe tweaking habits, just spending the hours in the gym and the weight room and so forth. So that's exciting. It's really exciting for me to see and he's gonna have a heck of an opportunity this year. Game at all I mean, all the game winners. You gotta earn those stripes in the NBA, but he's doing the work and he's heading in that direction is my opinion. He's got a really bright future as a shooter. He's always been a willing and good passer and uh, that's exciting skill set. I really just be focused on basketball. Like, I think about basketball, I eat basketball, I sleep basketball. That's all I think about is now is basketball, basketball, basketball. I think Dayron's a guy that put in a lot of time this summer. We worked him hard and he uh, responded. He got a lot better. Keep working like you have nothing. That's going to thrive you. That's going to keep you hungry. And um, I think he always understood what that means. Dayron's still is whatever he wants it to be because he's not going to sell it. And the more you tell him he can't do something, the more he's gonna to prove to you that he can do it. Sky's the limit for that young man. He, he has a tremendous future ahead of him.